out here today at Nico Circuit to see the D1 Grand Prix Divisional Series Central Division. For those who don't know how it all works, D1 Grand Prix is the original Japanese drift series that started back in 2001. It's currently split into three different levels of competition. Of course, at the top you've got D1 Grand Prix, which is the series you see drivers like Naoki Nakamura, Daigo Saito, Kawabata, and guys like that. And the cars generally have between about 800 to 1200 horsepower. Below that, there's a feeder series called D1 Lights, which used to be called D1 Street Legal. The regulations are pretty similar to D1, and the cars have usually between about 500 to 800 horsepower. I actually hold a D1 Lights license, but I don't have a car I can currently enter in that. The Mark II is a street car, and all the cars in that competition need to be a deregistered uh, competition only car but I can still enter D1 Divisional and considering I haven't done a drift competition for quite a long time I think it would be great to start at the grassroots level again and work my way back up Central basically covers the Kanto area which is around Tokyo and because that's where I live that's what I'm going to enter so I have three goals here today one get back in the mindset of entering competitions two check out what level of driving there is these days and three, see what modifications the guys who have the best JZXs are using. And so we have a sort of a baseline. One cool thing about Nico is it's very 21st century. That's the judging booth over there. And spotters used to stand next to them on that uh, dirt wall over there. But for safety, they've installed a bunch of cameras and they have some extremely big screen TVs showing live video uh, both panning and static and they also have the live scoreboard there as well all right so they're doing final qualifying now so this might be a good chance to walk around the pits and see what kind of level regional cars are in uh, 2021 This event here at Nikko is the first round of the season and the next round is going to be held at Mabara Twin Circuit and when you think of Mabara you definitely think of these guys Team Shame and their red JZXs so I'll be coming up against them for sure Interior is still fairly straight Honestly, most of these guys are still pretty close to street spec. See, they have uh, number plates. Here's Ishio's 180. We saw this last time at uh, Sportsland Yamanashi at the night competition. And of course, he's number 69. I'm assuming that's in LA. Hey, <laughs> Rokuji Kuban, Gambate. Yeah, Ishio's cars always need a bit of style. I haven't tried running Zek Novas yet. I might have to get a pair and see how they perform. So as you can see, this car too uh, has the D1 Lights window banner. So this car also enters one level above this. D1 Lights, for those who don't know, is uh, the new name for the series that used to be D1 Street Legal. And D1 Street Legal was kind of cool because when it first started, cars that were entered needed to have uh, an interior from the B pillar forward. Uh, it also needed to have a stereo that worked. And they also weren't allowed to swap the engine for anything that didn't come into that car stock. Like for example, you couldn't put a 2JZ in a 180SX. But you could, say for example, put a supercharged or turbocharged 4A GE in an A85. 
So if it came in that chassis from the factory in some form, then you're allowed to run it. But then of course, uh, you know, things change uh, and the rules ended up being basically a feeder series for Deere and Grand Prix. So the idea was you could build a car for D1 lights and uh, then essentially just power it up, put some grippier tyres on it and then run it in D1 Grand Prix. That's the idea anyway. The 5X, I haven't tried those either. Man, I've been out of the game for too long. There's so many brands of tyres I haven't tried yet. I really want to try them out and see what they're like. This is also a series that runs here at Nico's Circuit. Nico Drift Victory is the ND series that runs at Nico Circuit. And honestly, being the best driver at Nico Circuit is kind of a big deal. Because apart from Mabara, uh, it's the closest sort of drift centric circuit to Tokyo. And it's also close to a lot of places like Gunma, Tochigi, uh, more regional areas that have a lot of really skilled drivers in them as well. So if you're good at Nico, that means you're good. So what I need to do is have a look at all the JZXs which are in the top 16. stickers, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, team stickers on there as well, and he's even got on the roof a sticker of Namie Amuro, who's like a famous pop star. It's a bit hard to see, but this guy's got the live stream going on his laptop in the pits. That happens a lot now too, you get, uh, you know, D1, FD drivers sitting on the start line watching the competition on their phones in the cars a lot of these guys are packing up and going home because they didn't qualify but that's okay we've got our sights set on the top 16 JZX's only tyre warmers in this series this is the level we're at right now. Oh, what? That's my friend there. One of my friends qualified second. Nee. This is uh, Megoro. And just to show I'm not saying, oh yeah, he's my friend because he did really well. Look, it's, oh, it's, it's a bit worn out but my sticker is on his car. Good job. Max Power. Hey. <laughs> very good. Very good. Hey. Tire is very good. Tire is very good. Hey. Tire is very good. Hey. 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 Ah, Nankan? Nankan NS2R. So he's running Nankan NS2Rs on the back. And it looks like the front is Toyo. R1R. Yes, yes. That's actually a really good combo, honestly. The NS2s on the back and the R1Rs on the front. So Megado's car is uh, SR20 powered and it's also street registered. I've seen this car evolve a bit. It used to be a Zenki front end. Now he's got the Corky front. And it used to just be all flat black because uh, he crashed it and just sprayed it. But it looks like it's actually a look now because it's got that uh, maroon to black fade. Alright, it's time for the top 16 now. I think we have five JZXs in the top 16. 
Uh, most of the other cars in the top 16 are Sylvia's. There's uh, Kitazawa from Illusion in a Jason X90. I just found out this car is standard turbo boost up only. And uh, he somehow made the top 16. So uh, there's hope for us all. The tyres are the 08 C's and uh, Hanabuchi said he's running like 2.5 kilo. So this is like kind of right on the edge of being able to drift with wheels that big. Right, advantage to the lead car, JZX90 Yamashita. Winner! Next JZX out is this guy Kitazawa from Team Illusion. Yeah, he lost it. Uh, that's one JZX out. All right, this should be good. Next battle is my friend Meguro versus the guy who had uh, tire warmers on his car before. Ah, Meguro lost. Oh well. Next battle is Hanabuchi, who's got a boosted up stock turbo Cresta, and uh, Ijima. So it's a JZX battle. <laughs> Yeah, it might be lacking a little bit of power. He actually won that in a stock turbo car. There's a JZX100 in this battle. That's Kimura's car, and it's probably the closest to what I'm running right now. Winner, JZX. Right, time for the best day. So, lead car went too wide and he got uh, undertaken. Yeah, winner, Sylvia, and he's really fast. Ah, he ran into him. Got a bit 
to K. Final four battle, Thai Warmers versus Stock Turbo. The judges actually have a replay screen. I didn't notice that. Ah, JZX lost. Boo. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Oh, he's too fast. You can see when they enter and they hit this part of the track, there's kind of a dip that goes down and if they go too far over that then it's a penalty. And Lee Card definitely went over that. <laughs> Chase car understeered. All right, there we go. We have a winner. All right, I think I need a hand warmer. AK hot can of coffee. Oh, my fingers aren't even working properly. I think it was a good idea coming out here to see round one of D1 Central Series. It's given me a bit more confidence in uh, you know, what I need to do to get the Mark II ready for the next round, which is going to be at Mabara. Oh, it's cold. But before I go home, I need to make a stop somewhere else and pick up a package. I had to stop by here at Four Heads because this is where my mail gets sent to, like big packages. And something came here that I really want to open now. Casey from Shirts Tucked In sent a bunch of stuff and I knew this would be in it. I had to check it out as soon as possible. This is a 1980s or maybe 1970s style, I don't know, mood lamp. Now, I don't smoke, but it's apparently also 
a cigarette lighter. Goes in the cigarette lighter slot like that. It's got the on switch there. And it's a mood light. If you put a cigarette in there, it lights your cigarette for you. Okay, we have to, we gotta go and, all right. I gotta go and try this out. All right, so this is not an endorsement, but remember this is a, like an accessory from a different age. Here we go, put it in there. Oh, the light just went out and it's lit. It's an automatic cigarette lighter, an accessory from a different age. So there you go, amazing. That's uh, Kojima. He's the guy who drove that 86 on the uh, bonus channel. All right, more stuff for the next mail time. And I have a lot of stuff for mail time, so I'll be doing it uh, pretty soon. All right, that's all for me today. I feel a lot more confident now in tackling the next round of D1 Regional at Mabara. So make sure you click subscribe if you wanna see how that journey turns out. Here's some more videos for you to watch. Don't forget Instagram, also uh, twitch.tv, Noriara on there, links down below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Remember I talked about Kanto before? It's the same as in Pokemon. Like this area here, Nico, is where Cerulean Cave is. It's like meant to be like right over there.